Um, <laughs> I turned 23 yesterday. All right. Yes. 23 on the 22nd. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Good for you. Happy birthday. Thank you so much. Glad you're with us this week. Hope you had a good one. I did. Did, did. did the team do anything special for you for your birthday? They sang happy birthday to me in Korean. Okay. <laughs> it was amazing. That's they something. left like little index cards and cute notes on them everywhere All right. for me to find. It was great. All right. Well, <laughs> if you want to bless her for her birthday, bring her some bacon. <laughs> <laughs> or both. Hello, welcome back to Morrison Heights Family Connect. It's the podcast of Morrison Heights Baptist Church. I'm Tim Peabody. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad to have our guest, one of many guests at our church this week. She's a member of the Life Action Team. What color is your team? Blue team? Blue. The blue team is with us this week. Uh, this is Maxie Johnson. Hello. Who Thanks for I coming, Maxie. <laughs> <laughs> you can look at me. Tom, Tom doesn't get much attention in here. <laughs> Poor, Poor <Tom>. guy. <laughs> So, Maxie, you are one of the singers in our uh, revival crew this week. Mm -hmm. uh, love hearing you sing. Thank you for doing that. Oh, thank you. What else? What are your other jobs on the crew? Um, I'd like to, it's not an official job, but I just like to help um, my team members process life. You know, I like being available to them, listening You're to them. You're the counselor. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, good. I'm glad. I wanted to talk through something with you. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, okay, let's do it. Uh, well, that's cool. You are, you're from Mississippi. I, am I don't remember what town, Memphis, though. Tennessee. So okay. like Memphis, So like Tennessee. North Mississippi. North Mississippi. What town South do you Haven. claim? South Haven. South Haven. All right. Well, good. Now, in the introductory video that we saw Sunday night, you were speaking in Korean. I was completely confused. I don't know yeah. Korean. But Jane is a member of our church, and she apparently, according to our pastor, she lit up when she heard you speak. Really? I saw her in the crowd. Like, and I was, not that day, but I saw her the first, uh, on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And I saw her and her family, and I was just like, yes! <laughs> like, they're <laughs> Asian here. I love Asians. <laughs> How and why did you learn Korean? Okay, funny story. Um... I saw this meme <laughs> one day. It, it sounds bad, but hear me out. I saw this meme one day. So now day. kids are <laughs> learning languages because of memes? No, no, no. Okay. I'm getting old. It was actually kind of like a, a bash to Americans, actually, the memes. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Some of my it best is... friends are Americans. <laughs> no, hear me out. Okay. So on, on it was a globe, but the only thing on it was North America. And they were like, this is how Americans see the world. <laughs> Everything else was blue except for North America. Mm -hmm. And I just laughed until I realized. I was like, that's kind of true. Like, for me personally, I know uh -huh. it is. I didn't know much about other cultures. Even though I've always been intrigued by them. So as I started doing uh, just personal studies on different cultures, the South Korean culture really stuck out the most to me. And <laughs> I didn't want to waste my time learning a language I'd never used. So I prayed about it. And um, I got like a really deep peace. Um, about learning Korean, and so I really enjoyed it. Did your school offer Korean? How I did didn't you have learn? a school. I just <laughs> you, you were didn't. you were homeschooled, or you ran away from home? Uh, I'm 23. <laughs> so oh, so this is after high school. This was like two years ago. Oh, man, <laughs> I assumed you got years. an early start with this because you're no. good. I mean, I, I couldn't tell if you're oh, good. Oh, this not, is but it all, sounded good. It's all thanks to my friend um, Joy Kim. She, so she's Korean. You practice with her. She is. She helped me do the whole intro because I'm not. I'm learning about myself, so my pace is much slower in learning. I can. I just got to the point where I can we read at a decent speed. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, not that That's efficient. Cool. But. That's cool. Uh, so, what were you interested in high school? Not Korean. Um, in high school. Singing. I've always been interested in that. Um, Did you ever try out for American Idol? Heck no. I'm curious. I just thought <laughs> Absolutely <maybe>. not. <laughs> I never wanted to be famous. Really? For singing ever in my life. Um, I didn't want it to suck all the fun out of, out of it. Being famous um, for you would suck the fun out of singing. <laughs> I want, if I anything, that. I'd want to be an underground artist. So like a few people know. But mm -hmm. um, I'd never want to be like an upscale. Like, well, I hate to break it to you, but we all saw you singing this week. We know. <laughs> Uh, yeah. That's good. Way to go. I, uh, you, you really do a great job. Tell us what you like to sing. Like, what's one of your favorite songs in y'all's set? Um, yet Not I But Through Christ in Me. I love the tempo of it, the lyrics. Have y'all sang that yet? Not yet. Okay. We were supposed to on Sunday, but the things got changed. Um, 
but I, I love singing music that I can resonate deeply with the words regardless of how I'm emotionally feeling mm -hmm. um, and songs that remind me of truth especially when I'm not believing it so yet not I but through Christ in me is one of my favorite hymns to sing ever you can help me with something because my wife asked me this morning what was the song the team sang Sunday morning I said you're the third person that said that <laughs> apparently there was one that really hit us but we can't remember what it was you remember what was in the set Sunday morning did I sing it I don't remember I, don't, she I know King of Kings. Um, ah, yep. <laughs> That's I'm going to text her and ask her if it was King of I'll, I'll text her later. Okay. King of Kings. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So you said you like to let the song hit you regardless of what uh, emotional state you're in. How do you do that? How do you let a song affect you emotionally and, you know, Whenever you sing, it's your whole uh, person is singing. Mm. How do you get your mind in a state where no matter what else is going on in your life, you can be there and really mm. let the song take over? Um, by the grace of God, I learned at a young age, a younger age, that my emotions aren't stable. They change very often. So when I get to sing songs about the truth of Christ's character and um, of my identity in him, uh, regardless of how I'm feeling, I can't change the fact that that is true. So he taught me the instability of my emotions, but the never ending, you know, like truths of who he is and how important truth is and how it is absolute and concrete and regardless of how I feel I can stand on it at all times. Um, so when I get to sing songs that are true about his character, it's like I'm getting to remind myself um, and to encourage the congregation about those things. Something you do well is involving the whole audience in the song. Like the way you sing, it doesn't feel like it's just you and God. It's like you and all of us together singing. Do you think about that consciously? Do you know how you connect with the people who are in the auditorium when you're singing? Yes. One thing I don't do is look at their facial expressions. Really? <laughs> um, because if, if we look bored, you're going to be discouraged or something? No. Um, <laughs> if you look bored, I'm sorry for you. <laughs> you know? Fact of the matter is like, God is good. And regardless of how they feel about it, <laughs> it's like, I have to, I'm talking to myself and I hope that it benefits my brothers and sisters out there. But, um, yeah, I do take it seriously when, when Jesus prays, um, in John 17, that we would be one as he, he and God is one. And I'm like, that sounds impossible. But because he said, like, he prayed specifically for that, then it must be possible. Um, so uh, that's a desire that he has, that we would love one another in that way. And when I see the congregation, I don't just see random strangers I've never met before, but these are the very people that Christ desires um, us to be one, even though I've never seen them before. So mm -hmm. I see my brothers and sisters um, and hope that it is encouraging to them. So. Well, it is. You do a great job of it. I mean, the whole team does does an outstanding job. Uh, but we, we appreciate that you guys have your gifts and you're willing to use your gifts. And not just like, you know, it's not just like you occasionally use your gift of music. Right. You're traveling all the time doing this. How long have you been doing it? This is my second year. So second year. So I'm just a baby. How many With churches in Mississippi action. has <clears throat> Life Action been to while well, you're... I don't know. A lot I think, or a few? I, I, like, no, I don't know. We're not the first few. Mississippi church that you've served at through Life Action. I don't I think so. <laughs> you should keep track of that. I should. <laughs> I have to write things down. Otherwise, like by December 31st, I have no clue what happened that whole year. <laughs> that sounds ridiculous. Well, well I can imagine. Is. When you just you wake up and you're in a new place and you all you see is the inside of the church mm -hmm. all week, I imagine it's hard to keep track. Yeah, so if I, I can go through my journal later on and come back and tell you, but... It's probably not that important. <laughs> What's one of your favorite places you've been? Uh, Duluth, Georgia. Duluth. That's I've where I met. That's where I met a lot of a lot of my international friends. Really? Um, yes, and I, I got to... As soon as we got there, I saw all these buildings in Korean. And, like... Well, the buildings weren't in Korean, but <laughs> yeah, like the the names you of the buildings Korean? were in Korean. <laughs> yeah, that that stuck with me the most, and they had tons of boba shops and like pho places. Boba shops. Boba. That's the, the tea. 
it's, it can be a tea or it can be like a smoothie or coffee but the tapioca pearls I yes um. <laughs> my brother-in-law introduced me to that and he also introduced me to we call it pho because I don't know the right way to say it. pho <laughs> pho <laughs> yeah. uh, and that's good stuff it is good oh, soup yes it's pretty amazing well, so in Duluth, there were a lot of Koreans there, and you got you it were was. in heaven because you got to learn the language <laughs> and eat the food. Well, I was just learning the language, and and it was kind of like God's validation. Um, that was right before I asked Him, "Is it okay if I started learning it?" And um, so I started a little bit, and I got to speak it with them, and they encouraged me to keep going because, like, I didn't suck. <laughs> so, so that was very. Uh, cool yeah well you know like i said i don't speak korean but it seemed like in that video it seemed like you do so you're learning something oh, i'm trying good job God's grace. so uh has there been any experience that you've had on this trip that you thought by this trip i mean your tour with life action the oh. last two years uh anything that you thought i never would have dreamed that would happen with life action okay I never would have dreamed that I would be learning Korean. <laughs> I also never would have dreamed that. And it's not like a dream come true situation. It's more like, dang, God is, like, he really does know what he's doing, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, in my first year, I had this burning passion for diversity. And I still do. Um, it was hard because I could I could see in different communities what could potentially be causing a separation um, that's keeping us from becoming more diverse just because of cultural things. Um, and I just had such a burden for it that the Lord would just make life action specifically, but the church in general, more diverse. Um, and in almost each host home that I stayed in, we ended up having a conversation about diversity. Hmm. And I never started it. But it always happened. And by the end of my first year, I had established this thing with some of my host parents and people called BPQs, which means Black People Questions. And that's just like they're my way of letting them know they had a safe place to ask questions, you know, that they've always oh. wanted to know. <laughs> and I really enjoy Like, I love those questions and conversations. Really? Yeah. And so um, by my second year, before it started, all of the... Um, social unrest and racial injustice all of those things started happening and almost all of my host parents um, or people I had come in contact with that I had that conversation with contacted me back and were like asking questions again huh. like how and, and it was crazy because I was like God why do I feel such a strong burden for these things um, and such a passion for him and he just like he knew all of this was going to happen you know and so they all had a place to go to um, and to ask those questions, and huh. we got to have those conversations, and it was crazy. And, and you liked that? It wasn't <laughs> I loved a you. burden to you? loved you. Huh. Well, yeah. good for you. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, I didn't see that coming, I bet. Nope. <laughs> well, what do you hope to do in the future? I assume at some point you probably aren't going to be doing life action. Do you have any ideas of what you'd like to do after life action? I just take it a day at a time, because... <laughs> I don't have any plans because I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I don't know how to adult or well, life. This, this is a good transition. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You'll learn a lot through this. Yeah. Have you done any college work? Do you have a I degree have. or major that you're working toward? Not for me. Okay. <laughs> it's well. not. I tried it. Um, but even when I was in college, my main uh, courses were Spanish. So it, it usually comes back to languages hmm. for me. Um, but I love being at home, creating a home and an atmosphere where people feel safe mm -hmm. um, and not just emotionally but like they know they're going to be heard listened to we can communicate and just I love setting healthy atmospheres and so in the future even if I am with life action or not I hope to um, just make sure that I cultivate that kind of environment wherever I go yeah. I have cool. 30 children <laughs> <laughs> Tom yeah. thought you said have 30 children. <laughs> <laughs> no, I only want 20. Um, oh, I, I was going to say. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I want to adopt at least like five or six. But um, that's a hope. 
<laughs> and there's a big difference between five and 30. I know. Well, if I have 30, I want to adopt like 10. Mm. Like 12. <laughs> <laughs> I love this podcast. I get to learn stuff about people I never would have dreamed. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us today. Do you have a verse or a passage you want to share with um, us as an encouragement? I do. Um, there is, that's what I had to, I had to look this up before I got in here. Good, good. I didn't want to butcher it. But in Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24, it says, Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man boast in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man boast in his might. Let not the rich man boast in his riches. But let him who boasts, boast in this that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who practices steadfast love, justice, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, declares the Lord. That passage has got me, not just through difficult times, but in those moments when I'm like, okay, my purpose on this earth is not riches or wisdom or strength, so not prestige, not a job, not success, um, but it's to know and to understand the Lord. Even though I'll never know him completely and fully, um, I look forward to embarking on that journey, the process of sanctification, of knowing who he is and, be uh, and becoming more like him yeah. um, and just getting to enjoy him. Mm. So, Amen. Thank yeah. you. You're you want to lead us in prayer? We're certainly praying for your, your group. We've been praying for weeks for you guys. I know y'all have been praying for us. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you lead us now? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for this opportunity to um, come together with more brothers. Um, I thank you that you have left us with the two greatest commandments. All of them are great, but they all come back to the two, to the two greatest commandments, which is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. I pray that we would do a good job in doing these things, um, and that when people look at us, that by our love for one another, they will be able to see you more clearly. Um, I pray that you would uh, bless this podcast, that you would bless our team, bless this church, God. Um, not just for material gain, though that, that is a part of it, but I pray that you would bless it for the sake of your glory. Um, for all things work together for the good of those who love you and are called according to your purposes. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Maxie Johnson, thanks for coming on the podcast Thank today. you so much. I loved it. <laughs> well, you did a great job. Uh, tell you. us this. In the normal week for Life Action, what's the most annoying or frustrating part for you? Um, food. I, <laughs> I'm going to explain. Okay. I, that's my favorite part of the week is food. It's so annoying me. I have a ton of allergies. So oh, like gluten, bummer. dairy, um, eggs, some nuts, uh, fresh fruits and vegetables. Certain. It, it's annoying. So, um, learning how to be content when things, food-wise, I love food, um, when it's not up to my, when it's not in my control, um, or I don't get to eat as much as I'd like to, learning how to um, still be kind and gentle and loving and understanding uh, towards the people around me instead of being like, I want more food, you know, so <laughs> it sounds ridiculous, but it's a genuine struggle. Um, uh, I believe it. I if all I had to eat was avocados <laughs> and bananas. I can't, I'm allergic to both of those. <laughs> what, you, I mean, those are like two foods that everybody could eat. You can't eat either of those. Not what can you eat? Them. I eat meat and potatoes. <laughs> meat? Oh, meat that's and good. potatoes. Yeah, sure. I love she veggies. Potatoes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love big, hearty, healthy, hot meals. <laughs> so, all right. And a lot of it, yeah. Well, hey, if you can still eat steak, yes. a hamburger without a bun. Yeah. It's not as filling, but it's it's good. <laughs> bacon? You can still eat bacon? I can. I can. Okay. But I love potatoes. That's better than avocados. Vegetables. I agree. All right. Uh, we're going to wrap this up. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm sorry. I apologize to everybody who saw this. <laughs> this is the randomest thing ever. This is one year <laughs> since we started the show. So this is really? episode number 82, and it was March 22nd or something a year ago. Oh, it was my birthday. Was it? Yes. Hey, happy birthday. Well, thank you. You want to tell everybody how old you just turned? You're not supposed to I'm, ask a lady, but I'm, I'm I don't asking. care. Um, <laughs> I turned 23 yesterday. All right. Yes. 23 on the 22nd. Mm-hmm. 
So. Okay. Good for you. Happy birthday. Thank you so much. Glad you're with much. us this week. Hope you had a good one. I did. Did, did. did the team do anything special for you for your birthday? They sang happy birthday to me in Korean. Okay. <laughs> it was amazing. That's they something. left like little index cards with cute notes on them everywhere All right. for me to find. It was great. All right. Well, <laughs> if you want to bless her for her birthday, bring her some bacon. <laughs> <laughs> or bubble. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is Morrison Heights Family Connect. We love our family.